for most of us, recharging our electrical devices like cell phones and flashlights is as easy as plugging them into household outlets. But what about when you're out camping and away from AC power or in the event of a power failure? Well, that's where a device like the Shine Turbine can come in handy. If you're interested in hearing more about this innovative wind-powered battery bank and charger, keep watching. Hi folks, I apologize for interrupting the flow of this video, but I have some very exciting news that I want to share with you. So a lot has happened since I first received the Shine Turbine for testing. I just learned from Aurora Technologies, the makers of Shine Turbine, that they will be entering into a new Kickstarter program for their next generation wind turbine, the Shine version 2.0. So Aurora Technologies has taken all the experience they gained in the production of the original Shine Turbine turbine and just increase the performance significantly. For instance, the internal battery will now be charged at 50 watts. That'll quickly, much more quickly, recharge that battery. The output of the device to other devices will be increased to 75 watts using a USB Type-C output port. That means things like your cell phones, your cameras, your tablets will charge much more quickly. In addition, Shine Turbine will come with an adapter which will allow you to charge up your power stations like my Blue Eddies. They have also developed a Bluetooth app to allow you to monitor the progress and the wind speed of the charging process. They are also developing a six foot mast, the standard one being three feet, and the extra height allows the Shine Turbine Turbine to access winds that have much higher velocities, further increasing the performance output. Now, as we go through this video, I want you to keep in mind that all the information I presented to you will mostly still be valid, including the physical weight, the size, the dimensions, the look of the Shine Turbine will remain the same. The operation, the setup, and those types of things will all remain the same. What will change is the output, which will be greatly increased with the new version. So I would encourage you to watch this video to get an idea of what the Shine Turbine is all about, but then go to the Kickstarter page, which I'll provide the information and links for in the video description, so you can get a first look at the new version, and if you're interested, purchase it at at least 40% off of the eventual retail price. All right, back to the video. Before we focus in on the Shine Turbine itself, let me share with you what it came with. So. To start off, the unit arrived in this carry bag. It is a heavy-duty nylon, padded inside to protect your unit. Everything I needed was inside of this, and probably more room than I needed just for the device itself, but it's nice to have that room to put in a lot of other accessories, such as, let's start with this one. This is a velour stuff sack that the unit arrived in. I don't know that it's necessary to keep using this, but if you didn't want to carry the larger bag, you could at least put the unit inside of this one just to make it a little bit more compact. We'll put that aside. The unit did come with this quite long extension cord. This is a USB type A to USB type A extension cord. That allows you to get whatever device it is you're charging well away from the unit, especially if it's raining outside and you want to get it in out of the rain. That's a nice thing to have. All important, of course, is the operating manual and warranty information for this device. It does come with this, and I cannot tell you how valuable this is to have. This is a wind anemometer or measure for wind speed, and it is really crucial when you're first learning how to use the Shine Turbine so that you can find the best places for it to set up and get the maximum wind potential for you. Now, after that, it, your experience will come in and you won't necessarily need this, but it is a nice thing to use at just about any time you're operating the device. We'll put that aside. Then there were these things, and these I wasn't sure what they were when I first got them, when I opened it up, because of course I didn't read the instructions right away. They're sandbags. So there are four sandbags that you can fill up with sand, rocks, whatever you want to use and tie down the unit instead of using tent pegs. So let me just put those aside now. The unit in itself has a few more things inside that I will hold off showing you until we get it outside. So Stored inside of this is the mast or the stand that the unit will set on three feet off of the ground. In addition, it has its guidelines and its tent pegs all stored inside of the unit. Now, let's go through a key features for the Shine Turbine. Number one, and this is probably the feature that is most important for me. This unit was conceived, 
designed, engineered, and manufactured right here in Nova Scotia, Canada. Now, it does have a 12,000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery that is built into the device and is non-removable, although if it fails, the warranty will cover that, of course. It does have a number of important things such as MPPT, or maximum power point tracking. It has over-voltage, under-voltage protection like you would expect for this. It does have two charging ports, or one is a charging port itself which is micro USB and this is the output port which is a standard USB type A. It has an LED indicator here. It's probably hard to see but when I get it in operation you'll be able to see it. The same LED is used for checking battery status, wind speed in terms of is it, is it running fast enough to charge the battery inside and temperature. All of that is done through a series of different colors and sequences of flashes which are well detailed in the manual. It does come with a 12 month warranty and a 30 day return policy as well. Now let's get into the physical specifications for this unit. Let's start with the weight. 1.3 kilograms or 3 pounds. Fold it up like it is right now. It is 35 centimeters or 13 and 3 quarters inches in length. Diameter is 10 centimeters or 4 inches. Now when you get it outside and you mount it, the blades are going to open this up to 60 centimeters or 23 and 5 eighths inches. And it is mounted at 3 feet off of the ground, which is 91.4 centimeters. All right, we're going to go over a few of the performance specifications for the Shine Turbine because, of course, I'll be putting all of the information I'm sharing with you now and considerably more in the video description for your reference. What you need to know is that this unit will produce up to 40 watts of power at its maximum velocities. The operating speeds for the turbine are between 13 and 45 kilometers an hour, which is 8 to 28 miles per hour. If the wind speeds exceed 45 kilometers, uh, 45 Five kilometers per hour, there's an internal brake to keep it from overcharging and from damaging itself. However, it won't start charging until it has reached that minimum 13 kilometers per hour as well. The unit does have a dustproof, waterproof rating of IP54. All right, having gone over the basics of the Shine Turbine, Let's get outside and set it up. All right, setting up the shine is easy, but it does take a little practice. Mostly it's practice in recognizing where is the best place to set it up. It does take quite a bit of wind to get the turbine going, as you'll see. Now, so you've got a place you think it's nice and wide open. You can see behind me this field. There is no obstructions for at least 150 meters behind me. And the wind is at my back, so you can hear me on the microphone, of course. And uh, But it is gusting and it is shifting. So you'll see that reflected in the operation of the shine once I get it set up. So to confirm that this is actually going to be somewhere I'm going to use or want to use to shine. I'll use my anemometer, my wind meter to measure. So I'll turn this on. I'll hold it up and I'll move around until I find what looks to be the best direction for the wind. And right now, of course, we're in a bit of a lull. I'm looking for at least gusts of 13 to 20 kilometers per hour. Uh, ideally sustained winds of 13 kilometers an hour because that's when the generator really starts to kick in. And I'm getting about 10 right there. So um, it's going to be difficult to show you. I'll try and show you on the meter, of course. Right now, as I mentioned, we're in a bit of a lull. So it's reading 3.2 and actually nothing, no wind at all right now. And that's just the nature of setting up the shine, is uh, trying to find a place with sustained winds. Now, this will still be per uh, good for the purposes of this demonstration because the gusts are enough to spin the blades. It will generate some electricity, just not as good as if I was in sustained winds. It's not my location, it's just the winds aren't cooperating today. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna reposition the camera so you can actually see me setting the shine up. All right, now that I've selected my location for setting up the shine, it's uh, just a matter of digging it out and taking out the component pieces. So I have the shine. Now, I do have the little velour bag that I showed in the home demonstration part of it, but of course you don't need to transport it. Everything, actually, I don't even need the bag unless I want the cables and everything collected into one spot, and the bag is great for that. But for the purposes of setting it up, you don't need it. The only thing I'll do now is take off the silicone ring that holds the propeller blades in place or the turbine blades in place. Now, 
everything you need is inside of the nacelle, the body of the shine unit. So there is a magnetically held cap on it, it's the nose cap, but it is also the wrench. So don't let that go too far away. Pull out the components that are inside. And you, like me, you may have jammed them in the last time you got them. So what I'll have inside is my 10 pegs. There we go, things are coming out now. My guy lines and the mass, the collapsible mass. So the mass is the first thing you're going to want to set up. So it's multi-segmented, shock corded together. And there's a difference on either end. They look the same shape-wise, but you want to keep the black end up. And that's going to be because this is where the shine will be supported on the top of the unit. So drive it down. It doesn't have to be too deep. It's you're not, it's not a lot of weight. You know, most of the support's going to come from the guy lines. So it's in the ground. Now, I'll bring the cam this up to the camera so you can see what it is. But there are three guy lines, which, depending on how diligent you were putting it away the last time you use it, will be either tangled up like I have them, or they'll be all stretched out and easy to use. I want to show you this little device right here. So what you can see, it kind of looks like a hook and a ring with an opening on it. Now the hook is for attaching a cable to it just to keep it out of the way when you're running it to another device like your phone or something else. But it is this hole in the center that we're going to use to attach it to the mask. So first segment at the mask at the very top, open it up. That split in the ring goes over, close it back down. All right, so there is the three guidelines. Now, spread them out. And set them up. First peg in the ground, and actually all three pegs for the most part. You're not going to be spot on when you do this, so don't try to get it really tight the first time. Apologize if I'm out of frame as I do this. All right. And now the third. All right, take a look and I can see that my mast is looks straight in one angle, but in another angle, not so straight. It's also, I don't have the guy line set up in a good triangular formation. It really depends on how strong the winds are blowing, how much you need to do this. I can do some adjustment with the guy lines themselves to get the tension and straighten it up. That looks straight. Now, uh, Shine does provide as an accessory a little bubble level that you can attach to this to help you look and ensure, ensure that it's as straight as possible. Nice thing, if you want it, by all means use it. A little bit of experience you can see when you're looking down, straight down if it is going to be stable enough. And that is where I want it to be. Now, next step, I'll stand in front of the mast, is to release the turbine blades. So that's where the nose cap comes in again. Remember I mentioned I said there is a wrench on the end of it. Right here on the end where the blades or the turbine blades are attached, they are spring loaded as well. Loosen them off. You can fold them out one at a time or loosen them off and fold them each of them out. So fold the blade out and then tighten it back down. Loosen the next one, fold it out, tighten it down. And now the third one. Loosen it up and tighten it down again. Now at this point, if you're facing into the wind, uh, these blades could start spinning on you while you still hold it in your hands. Small risk of injury. So you just want to keep it in your hands and make sure it's not going to take off on you before you're ready to. Put the nose back on magnetically. It'll snap into place like that. And now we're ready to mount. Now on the bottom of the turbine, I'll show you here where this slot is. There is a mounting hole right here. That hole is going to go on top of the mast. Right here, of course, are the... Uh, output, the USB Type-A, and the input micro USB ports. So now I'll find it on the mast. 
So really at this point, your back should be to the wind so that you're kind of keeping the turbine protected from the wind until you get it mounted. It helps you can actually hold the whole thing sideways to the wind. Of course, there's no wind at all right at the moment, which only happens when you're doing a demonstration, right? Now turn it into what you think the wind is and you're off to the races. All right, I'm going to pick the camera up off of the tripod and take a little walk around and we'll just watch it because I want to show you the LED as it lights up. All right, I'm trying not to block the wind and you can see this is just the nature of using the shine. It will find its own nose into the wind. By the way, this is what they call a rear turbine. So the wind is moving in this direction. The turbine blades at the back end of the unit, not at the front end. You might think they were, when you think of other huge industrial turbines, uh, wind turbines, they're at the back. So the wind will move this way. It'll act like a weather vane. It can now spin freely on the mast like this. It just has to have enough wind to get it going. And of course, right at the moment, we're not having enough wind. Let's see what happens if I just give it a little, little help. Sometimes pushing it into the wind will get it going. All right, what we'll have, I'll do is, here we go. Wind gust picking up. It is still not fast enough to start the generation process. Still waiting on some wind. I'll wait a f another few seconds if it, uh, d wind doesn't catch up. I'll wait till we've got a good gust and I'll turn the camera back on. All right, we've got a pretty good wind speed going now. There we go. Now the shine is really starting to pick up speed and the LED is flashing, generating enough electricity to start charging the internal battery. Excellent. All right, that's enough to demonstrate the operation of the shine. One more thing I want to add. All right, the last thing I want to demonstrate for the shine is the takedown. And this is important mostly from a safety point of view. Now you can see this, the shine is spinning, but at very low speed only because, well, let's see if a wind gust will pick this up because the point I'm trying to make is the safe way to approach and take the shine off of the mast. It's, it's actually quite easy, but uh, I just want to have it spinning so that I can show you how it's done. All right, I think that's fast enough. That's not very fast at all, of course, but the easy way to do it is to approach it down from upwind. So you're approaching from this direction into the wind and the safest way to do it is just turn it 90 degrees out of the wind. And once you've done that now you can lift the shine off of the mast, take the end cap nose wrench off and start taking it apart just the opposite way you, you did when you assembled it. Honestly, just that easy. End cap back on for the moment. I will take the mast guy lines and tent stakes out. But basically, that's the operation of the shine and uh, it will produce electricity constantly, even if you're not paying any attention to it. It is waterproof in the rain, although you do want to protect anything that you're charging off of the unit itself that, to keep it from uh, getting wet. And uh, yeah, all right, I think we've shown enough now. We can wrap this video up. All right, a few closing comments on the Shine Turbine. So what I'd like to do is talk about who this unit is intended for and managing your expectations for it. So the Shine Turbine is ideally to suit it to someone whose electronic needs are limited to recharging their cell phone, their flashlights, and similar size devices. It will not deliver enough power to recharge large things like a power station or to run something like a refrigerator. For that, you are going to need a solar setup. However, the Shine has one distinct advantage over the solar panels, and that is it doesn't require sunshine. As long as you have the minimum wind speed, the Shine will run 24-7. And finding the enough wind is usually not too hard, at least for us here in Nova Scotia. Now, beyond that, it does have a bit of size and weight that you have to take into consideration, of course. And it does take a bit of learning to get the most out of it. You have to learn where's the best place to set it up to get the best wind for it. But once you've done that, it gets much easier with that experience. All right, that's everything I want to share with you about the Shine Turbine. I'm going to be 
be putting all the information I've shared so far and considerably more in the video description for your reference, including the links to where you can take another look at this unit. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.